Hi guys, welcome back to Our World Outdoors. Today we're going to be doing something a little different. This is my proof of concept video. Basically I've been stuck inside the house with a broken toe. It's driving me insane. So when I am not able to go outside and do anything, I work on stuff. And a lot of times it just ends up a pile of scrap in the garage. Sometimes it actually turns into something. Basically what we're doing here is I've taken a oil space heater. We took the the relay, all the safety features, everything electronic off of it. Okay, and then we'll call it made a fitting to adapt it down from the big from the big heating element that goes in it naturally for 110 we adapted it down to a water heating element which is one inch now that adaption process is something I'll go into in another video basically when it comes over all these heaters are made in China they use a machine thread not a pipe thread so it's kind of a uh, a weird thing the way you have to adapt it so anyone who wants to try this know ahead of time that if you wait till the rest of my videos come out I'll explain that now the first test we did with it was with oil still in it using oil as the median inside inside the the oil heater alright now you can use DC water heating elements with oil they do it all the time. That's how concrete trucks work in the winter. That's how vegetable oil preheaters for vehicles that run off vegetable oil. That's how they work. Now you need to have a DC heating element. Not an AC. Not like one you'd go buy at Lowe's that goes in your hot water heater. It has to be a DC one. And the other thing I'll tell you is a lot of companies are selling ones that go for 110 as DC. So check your supplier. Know who you're getting it with. Now, I'm not going to give you the name of who I got mine from, alright, but if you want to message me, I'll be glad to let you know there, alright, I'm not endorsing anyone, no one's paying me to do this. Now, the test we're going to show you today was done under very unscientific conditions, alright, for one... I don't have any safety features on this, like an on-off switch, a fusible link, um, or a standard socket fuse. A thermostat, really good idea, put a thermostat on there. Um, the resistance on the wire, we used an extension cord basically, uh, just for testing purposes, but it's only 12 gauge, so there's resistance, there's heat, there's losses in that because it's 50 foot long. and Outside for our panel, we use the GCI 285 watt 24 volt panel. All right, so the panel is just propped up against the back of a truck. It's kind of behind the house. It has a few hours there where it starts to really get some sun, and then about about one o'clock, it gets covered by a tree with shade. So it basically just falls off at that point. Now, I took a picture hourly from 8 a.m. all the way until 1 o'clock. These pictures are going to reflect the temperature change in it. But you need to understand that while it got up real hot, it didn't get up hot enough. So, in this system, I feel that if you had two of those panels hooked up to it, then it would be a viable solution. But I'm looking for something a little more efficient than that. I'm looking for something that one panel can run. Just because, I mean, panels aren't that expensive, but shipping is. So I'm just trying to make it as efficient as possible. In the next testing group, it'll be done with antifreeze inside of it and water mixed. Now, it's an oil heater. If any of you have ever used an oil heater before, they don't heat up rooms fast. They don't work well with big rooms. All right. Our purpose here is to have one in our house to keep the ambient temperature throughout the day up because our house is extra insulated. I double insulated the inside of all the walls and put up more drywall. 
so it holds heat well. But this was just something to keep it warmer in here, to keep the ambient temperature in our house warmer, and be able to basically just choke the fire wood burning furnace completely down. Now I also have a friend that we're working on this project as well for, he's going to use it in his bathroom. So basically this heater will heat his bathroom throughout the day as that's the coldest point in his house. So this is really for a smaller scale room just to help with the ambient temperature. If you're going to use it in a larger room, know that it's not going to change the ambient temperature very much. I mean, if it's pumping for a few hours a day, you may see a 5 to 10 degree change in that room. It's really not designed to solely heat your house. It's just, it's, that's not efficient. Electric in itself is not an efficient way to heat. And when you're dealing with solar, we all know you can have off days, you know. This is just something to help you out. And I believe, in comparison to, like, these pop can heaters, solar heaters, or, you know, the ones where they're using exhaust pipe, or any of those, where you got to cut holes through your wall, I feel that this is a more reliable source of heat. Because you got to have full on sun on that thing to be producing anything when you do those big pop can solar heaters ones. And I've made them. And we've built them and we've tested them. And they do have their homes. But I'm in Ohio. And in Ohio, we only get like two and a half to three hours in the winter of decent sunlight. You take that with one out of every, two out of every five days is gloomy. You know, you need to be looking at the most efficient principle as possible. So we're going to try heating water as an, a principle and heating oil as a principle inside of an oil heater. And it's not just limited to oil heater. We may try a radiator. But I'm trying to do something passive right now where there's no fans or moving parts. So I'm going to put all the pictures up with the temperature changes and kind of give you an idea and then a short video clip to show you how terribly the setup was as far as the panel and stuff. But you'll see that it's a viable option, and it's coming along. You need to be watching for more updates on this as we go farther and farther with this and see if maybe you have an area where this might be nice for you to use. I mean, obviously, you'll be able to use this panel that's driving this heater in the summer for something else, be it a grid tie, hooking it to a small battery bank. I mean, there's lots of uses. So I'll get to the pictures and uh, roll that short video clip and stay tuned for more videos on this series. As you can see, the setup is not optimal at all. The angle's wrong, and it has shading partially. And this is during our maximum sun part of the day, and there's trees in the way. But it's just a proof of concept. That's a GCI 285 watt, 24 volt panel. And as you can see, it's still chugging away, even under poor conditions.